Oh, I bought a lot of books. I bought a lot of books. I hope nobody's in the room next door right now. Welcome to a new video. If you are new here, my name is Kim. I am a third year, fifth grade teacher in West Michigan. And today I am here in my classroom, in front of my classroom library, to share with you lots of books that I have recently picked up. So these are all books that I'm going to be integrating into my fifth grade classroom library. And I am so excited for my students to get their hands on these. I ordered a ton of books off of First Book Marketplace, which is my absolute favorite place to get books from. If you are not already signed up on there and you are a teacher, you need to do that ASAP. They have heavily discounted books and then also I ordered books on Scholastic book clubs and then I did get a few books that I have right beside me right now from a local thrift store that I actually found earlier this week I think and so I'm super excited about those so I have books from all sorts of places and I have a lot of books to share with you in this vlog so buckle up maybe get some water get some iced coffee whatever you need to be comfortable sit back relax and let's talk about books First of all, I picked up a bunch of graphic novels from a thrift store. My students love these Babysitter's Club books. This one is in full color, and these are just the old Babysitter's Club stories, but reimagined as graphic novels, and a lot of my students are super into those, so I was excited to find that, and that's the first one in the series as well. And then I found a few, I actually four of them, yeah, four of these Phoebe and her unicorn books, which these are super fun as well. Again, just colorful, graphic novels kind of comic book style so I found books one two three and then six which is kind of random but yes I was super excited about that and I know my students will be too they love graphic novels all right, so I virtually attended the Michigan Reading Conference a couple of weeks ago. It was amazing. But one of the sessions that I attended was all on nonfiction and how important it is to get that into students' hands and how many students like love nonfiction, and my students definitely do. So I went a little bit crazy on first book and I ordered a ton of nonfiction. So I'm gonna go grab it. I'm gonna show you the books. There's a lot though, just as a warning. So I hope you have your ice coffee. So I am single-handedly keeping National Geographic Kids in business through this haul. I ordered so many books from National Geographic Kids from First Book Marketplace, but I seriously love, love, love National Geographic Kids because they have like the most beautiful photographs and like they're just super engaging. So I ordered a ton. So if you know anybody who works at National Geographic, maybe like give them my contact info. Can we like set something up? Because I would like to get these for free in the future. Um, I didn't this time, I did pay for all of these, but okay, I'm just gonna hold these up. They're super heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but I got all these books from National Geographic Kids. So let's start with these two. I have a couple of these like short chapter books. They look like this. I hadn't seen these ones before, so I'll put in some like close ups right now so you can see these a little closer. But I got the first one, which is called Tiger in Trouble and More True Stories of Amazing Animal Rescue. Super fun. And then Dog on a Bike and More True Stories of Amazing Animal Talent, which again, adorable. And then this last one that I got in this series is Hero Dogs True Stories of amazing animal heroes so I love how colorful these are and I love how timeless these are I have some of these National Geographic type books that have been around for a really long time and they're still just as engaging as these like brand new ones so super excited about those and then I got a ton of these I call them quick reads they're like leveled readers but I have a bunch of quick reads on my cabinets over here or kind of like a counter space and my students really enjoy them I love having them available for students who maybe are kind of in a reading slump and they don't want to start a new chapter book a lot of times they'll walk over and grab those quick reads and then it's just really empowering to them because it's something that they can all read so I bought let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of these and I already have a bunch of these in my classroom library so super excited about all of these again I'll just put like a close-up of me showing these right now so you can see them a little bit more clearly without me having to say the title of every single one then I picked up one of these weird but true books my kids love these I have a handful of these already I've actually thrifted quite a few of these so sometimes I do find them at thrift stores and like different thrift stores not always the same one so I think that these are books that people like pick up up for their kids because they'll see them at like the checkout at a store or whatever and then they'll donate them when they're done so I love picking these up and this one is based on the human body 300 outrageous facts about your awesome anatomy 
<laughs> it's so super cute. And I love how on the cover, the skeleton has on sunglasses. Super fun. The next book I have is that same size and it's 100 Ways to Make the World Better. I would have been all over this when I was in fifth grade. I loved thinking up like different clubs that I would want to make and like donating to different places and stuff like that. And this is just like so neat. So I know my kids are going to love this. And then kind of on that same wavelength i picked up this one which is called solve this wild and wacky challenges for the genius engineer in you which how fun is this like very stem oriented but yeah super fun different challenges in here and stories of like real people too like you can see them like talking on the side so this one is really really neat and then the next one is everything rocks and minerals look at that picture it was so beautiful and then right over here it says dazzling gems of photos and info that will rock your world. We love the puns. Then, are you ready for this next one? Okay, this one's definitely going to be a popular one in my classroom library because my students are obsessed with those Who Would Win books, and this is very similar. This one is called Animal Smackdown. Surprising animal matchups with surprising results. So kind of the same vibe as those Who Would Win books, but just a little bit different of a format and like a lot more different ones, different animals, I should say, in one, and like insects it looks like too. So yeah, I know that this one is going to fly off the shelf. I can just anticipate. I have a feeling that when I show share these books with my kids that will be one of the first ones to go so I'm excited about that and then the next one is a thousand facts about ancient Egypt this one is like a nice hardcover one don't really have too much to say about this except for ancient Egypt Woo, cool okay I'm so excited about this last one from National Geographic this is the book of animal poetry like this just looks so fun. It says there's 200 poems with photographs that squeak, soar, and roar. So this just looks so wonderful. I'm so excited about this. And April is national, I believe national. I think it's National Poetry Month, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, super excited about this and I definitely will incorporate that one into my teaching throughout the month and probably beyond. As mentioned, my students love the Who Would Win books, so these were the only two I believe that we were missing from the series. So Who Would Win Hyena versus Honey Badger, and then Who Would Win Hornet versus Wasp. This is just such a fun series. Like, I'd say at least probably 60 to 70% of my students have read like the entire series at this point. So there are a ton of books in the series and my students love them all. So yes, we had all but these two, so now we have the complete series until they come out with more. Pretty exciting stuff. Then I picked up a What Was book. I really enjoy these ones too. I have a lot of these already, but this one is What Was the Bombing of Hiroshima? And this was one that I didn't own already, so I wanted to pick this one up. I love the format of these books. They're just really accessible for students and they seem to really enjoy them. I actually realized after I picked this one up, I actually do already own this one, but that's okay. This is a step into reading book, Truth or Lie, Dinosaurs, which like I just thought the cover of this was so cute. And this was only like a couple bucks, so I don't feel bad about getting a second one so I got that one and then women in science another quick read as I call them and then deadliest 20 dangerous animals this one is kind of neat this one is neat because it's illustrated instead of having like the actual photos which I will say my students tend to enjoy like the real photos more but kind of interesting to have a variety and it actually looks like there's a couple others in the series too so that's neat I didn't notice that yet like stinkiest oh my gosh I feel like my kids would love that one I'll have to check that one out for sure and then I picked up a couple of these ready to read you should meet books so a couple different influential people I actually have a influential people poster on my TPT of Duke Kahanamoku who was a really famous surfer so I was excited to see this book because I love finding books that correlate with leaders that I have on my leader wall and then next I picked up this book I hadn't seen this one before but it just looked really neat this is called our story begins your favorite authors and illustrators share fun inspiring and occasionally ridiculous things they wrote and drew as kids so I thought this one could be really inspiring especially for any students who are considering becoming authors their themselves themselves in the future <laughs> Then, this one looked super neat. Again, I hadn't heard anything of this one, but I saw it on first book and knew I had to pick it up. So this one is called, This Is Your Brain on Stereotypes. How Science is Tackling Unconscious Bias, which I think is a really important topic to talk about with students, or just humans in general. So, really excited about this. Here's a little close up of the back if you're interested in seeing like more of what this is about. But yeah, I don't know. This is just a neat book to see. 
Okay, I'm kind of geeking out about this next one. Again, it kind of goes in the same lines of like the animal poetry one that I was really excited for. African acrostics, so fun. So I feel like you don't often see acrostic poems books, at least I haven't. I don't think I own any. So I'm super excited about this one. And again, there's like real photos in there as well. So really excited about that. This one I knew I needed in my life. Gross as a snot otter. Discovering the world's most disgusting animals. My students are gonna be all over this one. I can already predict it. This is a series as well. I believe there's one or two other books in this series already. So hopefully she comes out with even more as well. On the back it says, it's not easy being gross. You have to work pretty hard to be this revolting. <laughs> And then look at those little illustrations on the back. I love that, that's awesome. This next one was talked about at a couple of the different sessions that I attended at the Michigan Reading Conference. So after hearing about it twice, I was like, okay, obviously I need to get it. So this one is called Crossings, Extraordinary Structures for Extraordinary Animals. So pretty neat, not really a concept that I've ever thought about. <laughs> so I'm excited to read through this one. And this one seems pretty achievable too for like lower L. Like if you look at the text, it doesn't look like it would be too difficult. And it's kind of neat because there's like short text right here, but then there's more information on the next page. So this even would be a really fun buddy read if we were allowed to do that this year. Um, I really love doing those book buddies where you team up an older grade with a younger grade and they read together. This would be like a perfect book to do that with. The younger student could read the like easier text and then the older student could read the more difficult text, if that makes sense. But anyways, maybe not this year, but in future years, hopefully. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I know I'm saying that I'm excited about all of them, but I am. <laughs> All right, this next one is about Ella Baker. So this is a narrative nonfiction book and really excited about this one. And then these next ones are very similar. So these are all kind of narrative nonfictions, narrative biography type books. This next biography I got is called Faja Singh Keeps Going, the true story of the oldest person to ever run a marathon. This one was recommended in a couple of the sessions I went to as well. And I knew I needed to pick this up. This looks so awesome. And I believe this one is fairly new too. I think it just recently came out. So really excited about this one. The next one, I thought I had this book, but then I was looking for it a while back and couldn't find it. So I might have two copies of this, who knows? But this is Patricia's Vision, The Doctor Who Saved Sight. And we read The Doctor with the Eye for Eyes, I believe it's called, which is also about Dr. Patricia Bath. And so my students really enjoyed that one. So I thought this one would be a good companion book. So I picked up that one. Then I've been wanting this book for so long, but it was kind of expensive. So I was like kind of holding out to see if I would get it or not. And I finally bit the bullet and I picked it up and I'm so excited. It is R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha Franklin, The Queen of Soul. And oh my gosh, like how fabulous is this cover? <gasps> She's beautiful. I love her. Mm. This one's going on display. I'm gonna take down these books as soon as I'm done with this video and I'm gonna put this book on display and a couple other ones. Then I picked up this book, which is Juneteenth for Maisie. And there are a ton of books out there about Juneteenth. I think I have one other one maybe. So I knew I needed this because it was missing in my classroom library. All right, really pumped about this book. This is Wangari Mathai, The Woman Who Planted Millions of Trees. I have, I think, one or two other books about her as well, but this was one that I didn't own yet. This book is just absolutely beautiful. I love all of the colors. I feel like this will be one that students will definitely gravitate towards. And she is such an important woman, so I think she's a great role model for students to learn from as well. All right, another Aretha book over here. This one is called A Voice Named Aretha. And again, this one just looks absolutely beautiful. I love having a variety of biographies in my classroom library. I think it's very inspiring for students to be able to learn about people who have made a difference in the world. But I also really like having them for when we do biography projects in the classroom because it's so nice to just be able to grab a couple of books and read through them versus just finding everything on the internet. I think it's really special to be able to read a picture book like this and learn from this and then maybe be able to pair that with some information that you find online. But anyway, so I'm really excited to have more of those in my classroom library. This next one I've seen a couple of times on Instagram since I ordered it, and it's called Unspeakable, the Tulsa Race Massacre. And I'm just gonna read the inside flap. It says, in the early 1900s, Tulsa, Oklahoma, was home to a thriving African-American community. The Greenwood District had its own school system, libraries, churches, restaurants, post office, movie theaters, and more but all that would change in the course of two terrible, unspeakable days. On May 31 and June 1, 1921, a mob of armed white Tulsans attacked Greenwood. 
They looted homes and businesses and burned them to the ground as black families fled. The police did nothing to protect Greenwood and as many as 300 African Americans were killed, more than 8,000 were left homeless. News of the Tulsa Race Massacre, one of the worst incidents of racial violence in U.S. history, was largely suppressed, and no official investigation occurred for 75 years. So this is a book that is really, really important. It's about a time in history that I know I never remember learning about, so I don't think I ever learned about. So I'm excited just to read this one myself as well, and then also to share it with my students. This next book that I picked up is called How Ludwig Gutman Created the Paralympic Games, A Sporting Chance. So this one is really neat. I don't think I have a whole lot of books about Paralympics. I think I might have like one or two, but definitely not very many. So I was excited to see this one and I'm really looking forward to adding this to my classroom library. There's an interesting mix in here of some real, almost like primary documents in there and then also some illustrations, which is kind of fun because then you can meet, you know, the students who like the real pictures, but also the students who like just like illustrated pictures as well. So kind of an interesting mix in here. So this is one, again, I'm excited to read myself and learn some more from this too. So yes, this will be a great addition to my classroom library and this is something that I felt like was missing from my classroom library. So I'm really excited to see this. Okay, I missed this when I was going through those quick reads, but this one is ready to read. If you love robots, you could be. So I have a few of these books that just kind of give students ideas for different careers they might be interested in, which is kind of fun. So I wanted to add this one to that collection. And then the next book that I picked up is Rescue and Jessica, A Life-Changing Friendship. I've read this book before and I really enjoyed this. This is a paperback version. So it wasn't super expensive, and yes, this is a great nonfiction book. And then the last one that I have in this pile before I go grab the next is not nonfiction, um, but this one is <laughs> The Pigeon Has to Go to School. I own this one already, but this is on First Book for $1.99, so I picked it up. I don't know if I'm gonna gift this to somebody or if I'm gonna keep it. I haven't really <laughs> decided, but it was $1.99 and it's hardcover and I love Mo Willems, so I had to pick it up. <laughs> All right, we're getting closer to the end. I have my last few stacks I'm bringing over. Okay, now this is kind of mixed up because some of these books are from Scholastic and some of them are from First Book, so I apologize. But I have these books that I know for sure were from Scholastic. So I picked up another copy of I Am Enough. I know I own this one, but I thought I would get an extra copy because my school actually did a little project with this book. So I thought it would be nice to have a couple copies of it. So yes, I bought that one. And then this one I'm really excited about. My students this year love scary books. Like anything scary, they're super invested in. So this one is called Haunted World, a spine tingling tour of the world's most haunted places so this one will be super fun again just like a non-fiction book in here too so I'm excited to share that one with my students. And then this one I believe was one of the dollar books. It's Ruby Finds a Worry, and I don't think I own this one already, so I picked it up. I always will add the dollar books to my cart, and then whenever I get around to checking out, then I will just like have them all in there already. If you didn't know, if you add a dollar book to your cart, it stays a dollar for a week, but if it's already in your cart, it will stay a dollar until you check out, unless they like run out of it. So I also did that with this one. This is Dragon in a Bag, or Dragons dragons in a bag there we go and I haven't read this one I haven't really heard a whole lot about this one either but this was one of the dollar books so I'm excited to read this one and then also have my students read it and then from first book I picked up this cute little series these are kind of like quick reads they're pretty thin I actually oh they definitely are quick reads okay I thought these were gonna be chapter books when I ordered them but they're not but that's okay these books are a series of books called Camila and she is a YouTuber, I believe. Let's see, video star, baking star, stage star. Okay, she's like all encompassing. She does a little bit of everything. So these Camila books just looked super cute and I definitely have some girls who will like these for sure and maybe some boys as well. But I definitely bought them with a couple of my girls in mind. So we'll see if they end up enjoying these. And then this is kind of just randomly in here. This was actually sent to me from the publisher, which is pretty cool. So this is a Zonder kids book and they reached out to me and they're like, hey, would you like to receive this? And I was like, um, Yes, absolutely. So this is called Leo Inventor Extraordinaire. And this one is like a pretty thick book. This is definitely like a fun middle grade novel though. I'm gonna read the inside. It says, a lifer at the secluded Academy of Florence, Leo has never met his parents or anyone in his family for that matter. He spends most of his time tinkering with inventions that never work properly and making trouble with his infinitely more charming friend and fellow lifer, Savvy. 
after Leo's latest experiment goes catastrophically wrong, he discovers a series of secret passages beneath the school that can be unlocked by only the sharpest of wits. But instead of discovering the identities of his parents while in the subterranean maze, Leo finds his past and possibly even his future are somehow linked to the innovative Wynn Toys Company, whose genius president died mysteriously years before. Leo must now use his skills as an inventor to revive the toy company, oust its dastardly leader, and discover the fate of his real family. So this one definitely sounds like a fun kind of mystery type book. So I definitely have a few kids in mind who I think would really enjoy this one, so I'm excited to do a book talk on that one. And then, okay, let's go back to some scary books. So like I said, my students love scary books, so of course I had to get some more. So I believe these ones were all from Scholastic. I picked up The Secret Grave which looks super creepy so they'll love it and then I also picked up guest again super creepy <laughs> ghost in the headlights and the forgotten girl so just had to pick up some creepy books for my students who love to be scared and a book that I recently read and really enjoyed was City of Ghosts. This is by Victoria Schwab and I liked it so much I actually already had a copy in my classroom library but I ordered four more <laughs> off of Scholastic because I knew it was one of those books that I'm like okay I'm gonna tell all of my kids that they need to read this and I might do it as like a book club or something eventually but I think for now because I haven't started up book clubs this year I did for just a little bit and they didn't really work out because of COVID it's like they can't be around each other and so it just was getting really difficult if you're able to run in-person book clubs right now please let me know how you're doing it if you're still like you know maintaining that social distance and stuff I would really love to know because I just just wasn't able to figure out a way to do it in a way that made sense and so I haven't done them this year but well I did and then I stopped but anyways I picked up four copies of City of Ghosts because I loved it so much and I do have the second one of the series in my classroom library as well but I haven't read that one yet but I just loved this book so I'm gonna tell my kids like hey I ordered four copies because I really liked it and thought you might want to read it too <laughs> so yes I'm excited so now I have five copies of this book and I'm pumped about it Next, I picked up this book, and I can't remember if I showed this in a video or not already because I've actually had this one for a little while. This one is called American as Paneer Pie, and I loved this book. This book is phenomenal. It's just such an amazing story of friendship and of cultural differences and bullying and just like a lot of issues that students face, and it was just really, really great. So I loved the message in it, which was be true to yourself and like love yourself and you know don't worry so much about what other people think but then also the message could be you are not your parents for another character in the book like you are able to form your own thoughts and opinions about people and you don't need to judge people just because your parents do so I really love this one and then this one is actually kind of a similar theme and I read them back to back and I found a lot of similarities in the two this one is actually written all in prose though which I love that's one of my favorite formats of books this one is called red white and whole and this was such a quick read because it is written completely in prose and I loved this one again a story of friendship this one is definitely Definitely a story of grief though as well and of some you know trauma but here's just kind of a close-up so you can see the pros and what that looks like but I really enjoyed this one this would be a good book for students to read who maybe are intimidated by like really big long books that's what I love introducing my students to if they're having trouble getting through books I love showing them books that are written in prose because they're just a lot more digestible okay now I'm kind of mixing it all up here and I'm getting a little bit turned around I think this is the last of my stack okay cool okay so I had to pick up this one of course this is the newest Jeff Kinney book this is Rowley Jefferson's awesome friendly spooky stories I showed my kids the book trailer for this and they were so geeked they could not wait for it to come in so I'm sure I will have a long waiting list for this book and then this one is so funny so for whatever reason a couple of my students have decided that they are pigeons they like play pigeons at recess and they call each other pigeons I don't know why because they're fifth graders I guess but I found this book about pigeons and I told one of my students I'm like I ordered a pigeon book and he was like oh and he's been asking me like every day has the pigeon book come in yet mrs. Halls when can I read the pigeon book and I said after spring break because I need to film a video on it first <laughs> so anyways this one is called real pigeons fight crime and this just looks like a silly 
book but he's gonna love it and so I had to get it and I guess there's another one in the series it says too called real pigeons eat danger so my students are really excited about this one student specifically and his little buddy they're super excited about this one so so funny it says what do real pigeons do they fight crime of course <laughs> <laughs> so this one is just hilarious. So kind of the same vibe. I picked up this one, which is Agent Moose, which just kind of looked like a silly, funny book. So I definitely have some students in my room who love these types of books. So I try to pick them up when I can, even though they're not like my cup of tea. I have to remember I'm buying them for the students, not just for me. <laughs> then I picked up this book, which is another just kind of silly looking one. This is called The Cookie Chronicles, book one. Ben Yokoyama and the Cookie of Doom. <laughs> so this one looked really fun. And then there's another one in the series as well, it looks like, that is shown on the back. So this should be a fun one to add into my classroom library. And then the last book that I picked up, I'm super excited for. This one is called Ancestor Approved, Intertribal Stories for Kids. I actually just checked out the audiobook of this as well, so I'm probably going to listen to that in the next couple of days. But I'm just really, really pumped to have this in my library. I don't have a ton of books about indigenous peoples and that's something I really want to change. I have like a handful that I've ordered off of first book but um, I just haven't found a ton so if you know of some that you really love definitely let me know in a comment below but this one I'm really really excited for and I think my students will really enjoy this as well. So that is all for this book haul. I really hope that you enjoyed it and maybe got some inspiration from it for books that you want to pick up in the future. If you haven't already definitely check out first book. Not sponsored at all but I seriously love them. They're one of my favorite websites ever. That's why I talk about them all the time. If you want to share the titles of any books that you've read recently and really loved, whether that's in your classroom or at home or whatever, I always love new book recommendations, so definitely share those in a comment below or let me know which book from this video is one that stood out to you as one that you want to add to your classroom library or your home library. So let me know maybe one or two titles of the books that really stood out to you, ones that you're interested in reading yourself or sharing with your students. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far because I know this is probably a very, very long video, so thank you for sticking with me. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!